I'm feeling pretty good. I just got back from getting all this from the nest. <laughs> this little bag of popcorn came for free. And they gave it away as part of a sort of, it seems like a Celebration of the arrival of spring. Mm, no, technically that boat passed a long time ago. Spring technically starts on the 21st of March. Still though, Free popcorn is free popcorn. That's pretty good. I have uh, uh, about a hundred and six in dining dollars left. Plus, I think an additional 92 cents. If I remember correctly. I had a whole bunch of conversations. With various people on campus. There's that I made my journey from the Tower Fine Arts Center, the Visual Art Experience Room, to the Harrison Building in order to get to the Nest. Starting with a conversation with someone I who first saw me at a dining hall, most likely Brockway. Because I recall going to Brockway a lot when I was a freshman. Oh, but I don't even know uh, their name, or I think it's now her name. At the moment. Hmm. Apparently they were not on campus for about two years. 
And then, even then, I kind of remember, I can kind of remember not seeing them at all for a long time. And me and her, uh, we didn't see each other very often. So I feel quite fortunate that I got a gut feeling that I should stop working on my abstract painting after doing four 35 minute sessions in which I painted and took no breaks. I painted with different hues of orange and blue. Excuse me at times. I need to mix up some more paint. I finally got to the nest around 9.30ish. PM. It's currently 10, 12 PM. I was working on this resume Before I ultimately made the decision around 6.30, I would say, to go and, to go and walk to the tower building and work on an abstract painting. At some point, one of my fellow classmates in the visual art experience, but well, I haven't really gotten to know until that point because he's in group B, aka Thursdays, while I'm in group A, aka Tuesdays. Apparently, he's a freshman. And is a little behind on the abstract painting project because he missed at least one class due to pulling muscles in his legs while weightlifting. He introduced me to the heavy app which resulted in me downloading it. But uh I technically made an account for it through my Google account, but I haven't really tried out the app yet because I haven't done any workouts using it yet. I hit the start new workout button, but apparently it immediately started timing me, so... I panicked a tiny bit. I thought I was 
I'm going to create a workout. And then I'd be able to do it at a later date. And then later on in the journey, I encountered Megan, and uh, a friend she, she was with, as I was near. on the pathway to the Harrison building. She told me about what's going on currently in the Senate. Told about my desire to make a video on blood donation. Or I think I might have said that to another person. I encountered that was between the old friend girl and Megan. No, wait, that person, they were after Megan, after I had already gotten this stuff from the nest. And we talked about Basically, I talked about the abstract painting art project, and that I'm currently taking Spanish, and her favorite colors. His was blue, I mean orange, and I said that historically my favorite color has always been blue. And in response to that, I said that Naranja is the Spanish word for orange, and that the Spanish word for blue is azul. And in response to that, they said that azul makes you think of the lightest blue possible. And in response to that, I asked, why? Essentially, why Azul makes them think of the lightest shade of blue possible? Because it does it for me, at least not at this moment.
with the old friend girl I talked about how I saw a geese during a trip in which I watched from It was on the return trip from Brockway back to Eagle Hall. How I saw the geese and how despite it raining a bit at the time, I took my phone out and used the zoom in feature to about 1.7 magnification on the camera app on my phone to take a picture of the geese because the geese are pretty feckle. If you approach, try to approach them or approach too closely. They either run away or fly away. I specifically skipped getting dinner tonight at the Harrison or Brockway dining halls. So that I could exclusively work on my abstract painting for what ended up being a little over two hours. <laughs> Excuse me. I only managed to get one picture of one group of geese. Because later on, during my journey back, after my national security class, for which I only took these notes, because... The beginning of it was a debriefing of no way actually the beginning of it was used to discuss that post-mortem essay assignment. That's due by the end of the week. The rest of it was used for a debriefing of that war games simulation we did. During which each of the four teams that represented the nations of North Korea, South Korea, the United States, and China... They all said why they decided to do the things 
they decided to do. What they would do differently, what unexpected things happened. was starting at 12.20. And uh, what would happen in real life? I participated near the end by essentially saying that in real life, China would be more hesitant to provide aid to North Korea than they were to us during the war game simulation. <sighs> because if North Korea did even accidentally have a missile land in Guam, which is considered U.S. Ter territory and I believe is internationally recognized as such, North Korea would be considered the aggressor. And China would not aid North Korea because they essentially see North Korea as a buffer state. And that's why they didn't send troops over until UN forces were practically on the border between North Korea and China. In response to that, you know, Dr. French essentially said that you know, that Mao had pretty much made up his mind on having Chinese troops intervene. By the time UN forces crossed the 38th parallel, He was pretty much itching for a conflict in order to show that China is strong and capable of standing up to even the mighty U.S. as Dr. French himself said, put it. Uh, which, in a way, is true. Chinese forces did prevent UN forces from recapturing North Korea in the end. Between that and me making the decision to work on my abstract painting, I tried to uh, work, I did a bit of work on the 99th Dan Hamming while trying to work on my two Friday projects of the last weekly assignment in my African politics class, and again, that post-mortem essay. There's a good chance of me picking this one in a Pyrrhic Russian victory against, excuse me, Chetnian fighters who were essentially in the same vein as the Kong fighters or 
Al-Qaeda fighters or Taliban fighters. Then there's also this one, the last major war of, I believe, the Russo-Japanese War of 1904 to 19... Uh, excuse me, 1905, which is pretty much the earliest you can go for that post-mortem assignment. It's some major national security failure from either the 20th century or the 21st century. He said at the start of class, he doesn't want us picking anything Waterloo related. He wants us to do something more recent, but on the other hand, he did say he would prefer something earlier on the spectrum he's ultimately allotted to us due to there being more objective information. And I know what he's getting on on that. You gotta let time pass so that history and uh, historians so we can all figure out what really went on beyond bias. I know that there was bias in the war between Armenia and Azerbaijan During the conflict, Azerbaijan said quite a few bad things about Armenia during on its media website. And there's currently disagreement over who started the conflict, either Armenia or Azerbaijan. Wikipedia says that it was Azerbaijan. Uh, though someone said it was Armenia who started the conflict, in particular one person who commented on a video about the com about the conflict on YouTube. And though I'm not entirely sure what research the Armenia started it person did, ultimately. Yeah, but then again, Wikipedia can be edited by just about anyone. But they're still probably more credible than a random person on YouTube. Even though Wikipedia isn't considered credible enough for you to you directly use it on school projects. Me and my dad went out to eat at the Blue Ridge Grill. I got the Dublin omelet with coffee. The Dublin omelet was an omelet with corned beef and hash. Hollandaise sauce. And Dad remarked that it wasn't that much Hollandaise sauce that time around. Uh, this was around 10-ish in the morning. I would say I got back onto campus around 11.20 in the morning after needing to go to the bathroom in the last 15 minutes. 
in which Dad was away long enough to trigger the 10-minute radio shutoff alarm or uh, reflex. He was probably, that time was probably spent looking for that Shaheel Snacks thing, which he found, looked for and found in response to me. Basically requesting a snack healthier than Pringles. I initially said that I wanted him to get trail mix, but he uh, told me that essentially that we already had this, which is fair enough, though it also would have been possible to get another variety of trail mix. I had uh, some of this trail mix when I was hungry, and then a bit more to ensure I wouldn't be hungry while I was working on the abstract painting, with that first batch being around 5 p.m., and then the second being around, I would say, 5.45 p.m. I actually got into a bit of a conversation with, I believe, our waitress after I said a bit of Spanish. In particular, I said, Me gusta la com comida. Or, I like the food. But she didn't know what I said, despite taking three semesters of Spanish as much as I have now at this point. Hmm. It took me a while to ultimately find this, but... I'm glad I took the time to look for it since, and now most likely after this, I'm probably going to work on the resume more so that I can present it at some point at the career services on campus, which are located within the second floor of Daly Hall.